Hey VC, it's Mazzy here, and uh, this is a sort of part two, but an, uh, an alternate video uh, based on my Psychedelic San Francisco Live albums. Artists recorded in uh, San Francisco at Fillmore West, Winterland, uh, Berkeley Community Theater, places in the Bay Area that I just did. If you haven't watched that, you don't have to watch them in any particular order. I'm going to make some corrections here, but this is about the Fillmore East. Bill Graham's Fillmore East in New York City. Live albums recorded there. But before I do that, um, I'm going to... I got a bunch of uh, comments and there's some corrections uh, I got and a few things that I totally forgot about and people are reminded me about. So I'm going to add those on here as well. First, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't show Bill Graham's Last Days of the Fillmore West. Uh, this is the Fillmore The Last Days. This is the box set, a three record set that came out, excuse me, five, the six record set. No, side six. Three record set, excuse me. Of The Last Days in 1971 of the Fillmore uh, West. Bill Graham closed the Fillmore West around the same time as he recorded, very close to when he closed down the Fillmore East. Had a week of shows turned into this um, set. The set's okay. I think they're better places to get these bands. There's a wonderful booklet uh, included in here, the Fillmore, that um, showcases the venue, posters from the venue as well. The Fillmore West was... Um, on, in San Francisco on Market Street, on the corner of Market and um, South Van Ness, above a car dealership. This is a, a copy of the poster for the final days of the shows that was put out. And um, it was a, actually a great set of shows, mostly San Francisco-based artists at the time. Santana, Grateful Dead, Hot Tuna, Malo, New Riders of the Purple Sage, Quicksilver, It's a Beautiful Day, Taj Mahal, Boss Gags, Tower of Power, Cold Blood, Elvin Bishop, Stone Ground, Sons of Champlin, and Lamb. So very San, San Francisco artist-centric. Um, a few other corrections. I showed this album, and I made a mistake. It was recorded in Berkeley. It says right on the friggin' cover. And I wanted to show this, and instead of that CD I showed... That was an expanded version. This is what I meant to show. This is the expanded full live show of this. So not a truncated version. This came out for Record Store Day uh, last year, I believe. And it's the full show of the Berkeley um, at the New Orleans house in Berkeley. Really great. Offshoot Jefferson Airplane, Yorma Kakonin, and Jack Cassidy. And uh, wonderful, wonderful recordings. Um, made a mistake. This was not at the Fillmore. Uh, it was recorded in the East Coast, I believe, or was it L.A.? But made a mistake on this one. But the other live creams were definitely recorded in San Francisco. And I thought I'd just show you this. Uh, this is a British edition where they actually just separated the live and the studio record. I don't know if they... They must have done a, the studio version. I don't have that. But I, I, thought, I like the alternate black cover instead of the silver. And this is just the live... Uh, set that was uh, recorded at both Fillmore's, Fillmore West, uh, Winterland, and the Fillmore East. So I, I couldn't sneak that in here to uh, Cream from Wheels of Fire. Another record I totally forgot that Side 2 was recorded at Fillmore West, Traffic, uh, Last Exit, and that's a, and I actually saw them uh, at Winterland, but not this show. I saw them later in the 70s. Probably shouldn't even bother with this, but I love Bruce Springsteen. And one fucking song, the song Fire, was recorded at Winterland in San Francisco from the um, 1978 tour. And it was a concert I attended. So, um, great show. I sat in the uh, front row of the balcony for this show. Uh, and um, the person who got us tickets, who was a record company, uh, hoity toity guy, uh, served us some brownies. And it turned out, well, we know, you know what I'm, I'm saying there. Um, but a great show. And uh, the tour is everywhere else. So I'm just going to throw that in there because of Winterland 78. One song. Fire. And uh, I wish I put this in the San Francisco uh, set as well. The other video. Because uh, the Youngbloods, a favorite of mine. This is when they're down to a trio of Jesse Colin Young, Joe Bauer, and Banana. This is recorded all around the Bay Area. Uh, one Part of it was at the Family Dog, which was on the Great Highway down from the Cliff House. And it's also, I attended that show, but I don't know which cuts which. 
so I'm not sure what I actually saw. So my voice is clapping, or my, my voice wouldn't be clapping. My hands would be clapping. I might be yelling or doing something. But um, the Youngbloods, I attended that. Uh, before I get into the uh, official, oh, one more thing. The Birds Live, uh, Untitled, I didn't show because it wasn't recorded at the Fillmore's. But uh, this came out uh, about 10 years ago, and this is The Birds at the Fillmore West, uh, fe February 1969. Great, great performance uh, of The Birds. Um, so there. That's when Clarence White was playing guitar with Roger McGuinn and company. Love this, love this. I was reminded um, by this, I think it was Sean, was it Sean? No, somebody reminded me of this this morning and I apologize, I just blanked out because I was reading all the comments and corrections and I got a couple of inboxes from friends of mine uh, with corrections. And uh, see, I just go along, whatever comes over, comes out of my mouth, comes into my brain, it's all improvised. I do know it, but I don't always get it right. I try. Let me just show you uh, four jazz albums just because I didn't show jazz in the last video, but. I thought since I'm doing sort of a bridge between the East and West, I gotta throw some jazz in there because Bill Graham, one thing that was amazing about the way he put together uh, shows was he would mix up all genres of music. R&B, soul, um, oh God, I didn't even think of, um, oh, that's a whiskey, anyway, but, but um, Otis Redding, um, Aretha Franklin I showed yesterday or in the other video. Uh, he would put Ravi Shankar, he would put Miles Davis, but I love this cover, so psychedelic. This is the San Francisco with the film where Charles Lloyd, uh, great cover photograph by uh, the infamous uh, Jim Marshall photographer. There you go, this is a mono edition, I have both stereo and mono, but so psychedelic, uh, very kind of fusion-y, uh, kind of cool, really wild stuff. Uh, Charles Lloyd's a flautist, if you didn't know that, but um, cool stuff. Miles, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, Don Ellis, Don Ellis Big Band. I actually saw, what's, what's great about it is I was talking about his uh, bills. I, the one time I went to, at the Fillmore West, I was a little young at the tail end of that. Most of my shows were at Winterland that I went to for Bill Graham shows. And then when he got into the club scene in the larger days on the green at the Old Coliseum in the 70s. But... I saw The Who perform Tommy in 1969, about a month after um, Tommy came out. They, they performed the entire Tommy rock opera, uh, very much like you hear on um, some other, uh, the Fillmore uh, and the uh, Live at Leeds thing, or the expanded Live at Leeds. But um, Don Ellis, big band, little big ba jazz band. I saw the Woody Herman band. Woody Herman band opened for the Who doing Tommy. What is that about? How cool is that? It introduced us young people to all different genres of music, which is pretty good. Um, Miles Davis was pretty funky and pretty wild fusion-wise in those days. And this is um, great Miles at the Fillmore East. Or is it the Fillmore West? Now I'm confused. But um, Miles at the Fillmore. So this is the preamble to my Fillmore East record thing. And then of course, uh, King Curtis Live at the Fillmore West, I forgot to include. Great sax player, R&B, funky, jazzy. And there you go, another cover shot by uh, Jim Marshall as well. So now, uh, a few overlappings from last time. Quicksilver's Happy Trails was recorded both on the East and West Coast of the Fillmores. So, um, we don't know which cuts are which, but I thought I'd just throw this in there because it's a great record anyway, and you need to see it, and uh, Fillmore East. Same with this, East, West, Winterland, East, Fillmore, uh, Grateful Dead, Skull and Roses, great, great live album. A little more acoustic, Fillmore East, Grateful Dead, Bear's Choice, Volume 1, promo copy I got back in the day. East and West again. I'm showing this from last time, but this is a Japanese version I have with Obi. Again, one of the great live albums. Probably the last track you could skip, but otherwise it's a perfect live album. I think it's my favorite 60s San Francisco live album uh, of the day. Again, as I said, Jack Cassidy's bass playing is stupendous. In the, and in the 70s, 
Not a bad album, not a great album. This is 73. This is the time when uh, Freeberg, uh, um, David Freeberg from Quicksilver joined the band after Marty left. And uh, Papa John Creech <laughs> started playing violin with them. We used to joke, uh, everybody jokes, Papa John Screech. You got that screechy sound throughout. Not essential, get the other one. Um, okay, Fillmore East, the great Who at the Fillmore East, three record set, huge album that came out just the last couple years. Had ever been released before, um, fully, or even at all, I believe. Um, this is great. Um, has a lot of their hits on here of the time. I mean, it has like Summertime Blues, Fortune Teller, Tattoo, Happy Jack, I Can't Explain, It's a Boy, A Quick One, Come On Everybody, Boris the Spider, My Way. Then it has side three and four. The third disc is in a one 30 plus minute version of my generation, uh, which is pretty cool. So um, if you like The Who and you like The Live Who, if you like uh, that crossover from the pop band or the pop uh, band to the heavy band of Woodstock days after the year after this. Um, this is a pretty good bridge to that. Um, good, great record. I'd say Live at Leeds is the better live album than this, but uh, this is something wonderful too. Sly and the Family Stone, uh, again a posthumous record, came out um, just in the last couple years. Fillmore Concerts, originally of Record Store Day, then it expanded. Uh, and this is Sly and the Family Stone, 1968, Fillmore East. The Fugs. If you have to ask, you don't want to listen to this record. Um, they're in the vein of the Zappas and the Captain Beefhearts, and um, I gotta just read you this. However, if you, you hesitate to hear about the cold fork of naked reality. If you hesitate to confront the fugs on a plateau of agonizing honesty, then you better flip this record back into the rack and go dig up some old monkeys albums. So much for the worst for your sense of value. For 1984, and this album came out in 1970, so they're looking in the future. So in 1984, you'll pay $50 for a first edition fugs record that you can scarf up real cheap right now back in the USA. So they're telling us in 1970 that by 1984, this record is gonna be worth 50 bucks. My early copy, pristine, is it worth 50 bucks in 2019? Is it worth less? Is it worth more? I haven't discogged it. Someone could look it up for me because I'll forget after this uh, video is over. I move on. Like Woody Allen, I don't watch my movies. That's not totally true. Uh, Jimi Hendrix Concerts. This is an overview that came out in the uh, early 80s, I believe, 82. And it's a various concerts. Again, it's mostly San Francisco Winterland, but it also has um, Royal Albert Hall, London, and a few other things. No um, Fillmore East, but I'm moving into there in a, one moment. But I forgot to put that in my other one. But um, Fillmore East, New Year's Eve, 1969-70 with Buddy Miles, and um, this is a wonderful record. This was a hit record, too. Um, Buddy Miles and Billy Cox. So the different trio he did, and then, of course, it expanded into this version of uh, the Fillmore East concerts, and this is the uh, Jimmy Hampton Fillmore East, the first show. There's a box set, I believe, coming out in the next month or two of everything from uh, the Fillmore East. So, Jimi Hendrix, Fillmore East, 1969, 1970. You Hendrix freaks might know more than I do, and feel free to comment away. One of the great, great, great uh, live albums from the Fillmore East, Joe Cocker, uh, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, uh, recorded the Fillmore East, they went on tour. The tour was organized by, um, or the band was put together by Leon Russell. Great, great band. A million friggin' people. <laughs> Too many mouths to field, feed. Watch the documentary. But it's a wonderful record, a wonderful recording. Joe Cocker is amazing on this. Amazing performance. Um, A&M Records. It was a hit record, too. A&M was really trying to 
to parlay this first two records and uh, all the um, interest he was getting uh, post Woodstock. So Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs, and Englishman. Great recorded album, Four Way Street, Crubby Stills, Ash and Young. Originally it was a two record set in the 70s, and this is an expanded three record set with everything um, from that, or everything decent from that. But uh, really well recorded. Whatever you think of uh, Crub Bizzles and Ash, this is a really fine album. Sounds great. Well recorded. Um, <laughs> these two I'm going to show. Mothers of Invention, 1971. Uh, Flo and Eddie is on here. Uh, Howard Kalin and Mark Volan, who originally were in the Turtles, remember? So happy together. They're on stage uh, with Zappa. And the key track on here for me is the mud shark and um, having listened to it again the last several years it's a story of groupies and a band and we think the band if you if you google mud shark edgewater hotel seattle mothers of invention you'll hear the whole story uh, we think it's vanilla fudge had groupies and a mud shark in a hotel room that's all i gotta tease you here but the edgewater uh, was a hotel of rockers all through the late mid 60s, late 60s into the 70s. Uh, famous pictures of the Beatles uh, fishing from the water, uh, from the hotel room into the Puget Sound because it was right on the water and the what's now the gift shop apparently used to be the bait and tackle shop. So you could fish from the hotel. Uh, there's a now a lounge, it's upscale now. Cool place to go for a drink if you happen to be visiting Seattle, call me. I'll meet you there, you can buy me a martini. Um, but by the fireplace in the uh, one lounge area uh, off the lobby, there's rock and roll pictures of the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and the Monkees and the Jacksons and so many rock and roll pictures. Uh, but now it's fixed up. It's a little more uh, she-she, but it's cool space. But I'm showing this. Sometime in New York, some people consider John Lennon's worst album. Sometime in New York City. But the second disc... First disc of studio, second disc is live. He shows up, and I don't know the history of how he showed up. Him and Yoko showed up with the mothers. Look familiar? So, Frank Zappa are backing up John and Yoko, the Plastic Ono Band, and they do cold turkey for seven and almost eight minutes. Don't worry, don't worry Kyoko. Mummy's only waiting for a hand in the snow for almost 18 minutes. And that's Yoko really going at it with Zappa. I don't know what Zappa thought about this. Um, they also do Jam Rag and Scumbag. So it, se it, it seems like a match made in heaven with Frank Zappa, Yoko, and John Lennon. But um, I heard it was somewhat uh, tempestuous. Uh, not for the faint of heart, as they say. And lastly, I'm going to show what two records or a box set, and I don't have the original record version, but what I consider probably the best live records at the Fillmore East. Eat a Peach, Almond Brothers. This is a Japanese uh, Obi-Wan. Oh, Obi. <laughs> Eat a Peach. You all know this record, or you should know this record but even more wonderful, and it was a two record set. This is the expanded um, four record set of Almond Brothers at the Fillmore East. An amazing recorded record, wonderful jam, wonderful songs. Dwayne Almond is magnificent. A whole band is just tighter than ever. Probably one of the best live albums ever made of rock and roll band. Um, with the, these wonderful cover images were taken by, again, Jim Marshall. And each record in here has alternate versions of the cover photograph. So I just got to say, the Fillmore, the Fillmore, uh, again, Bill Graham only ran it for three years from 19... 78 to 9, no, excuse me, 1968 to 1980, 1971. I got my years off here. It used to be a Yiddish theater, and now it's a bank. Every, everything that's fucking good is a bank or a Walgreens right now, or a, or a CVS, CVS, 
a fucking drugstore or a bank. Tower Records, Columbus Bay, San Francisco's Walgreens. Anyway, VC, the Fillmore East, Bill Graham, great rock and roll, great jazz, great music. A uh, couple of records I don't have. Uh, I was thinking real fine, I think it is. Taj Mahal did a great record uh, from there. I think I wrote down a couple things. I don't remember. There's obviously a handful I'm missing that I don't have. Um, there was a John Mayhall record. John Mayall record um, was recorded at the Fillmore East, too. So there are others. This is not definitive as usual. But Mazzy thanks you. Thanks for watching. You know, give me your suggestions, your comments of other things. Uh, watch the other video if you haven't, the Psychedelic San Francisco Live video. And um, thanks for being a subscriber and um, enjoy the music. Mazzy loves you.